Hello everyone. Happy Tuesday. It's time for another episode of Tuesday Live at 5. This is Lena Gursa. I'm an independent demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada, and I have some adorable projects to share with you today just in time for Christmas gift giving. Now, I'm going to say this right off the top. Last week I had major techni te technical issues. Um, our Wi-Fi was not cooperating. I do apologize if you were one of the many people who was frustrated by the inability to see what I was doing last week. But I think we've got the the uh, issues solved. We've got a new modem and things have been pretty consistent this week. So I'm hoping that we are good to go. All right. So, um, Christmas is coming very soon, like two weeks. And I thought it would be a great time to give you some project ideas to um, whip up some quick Christmas gifts. We all need neighbor gifts and teacher gifts and and uh, just little thinking of you things for service providers at this time of year. So I thought it would be um, helpful to show you some things that you can do with products that you might already have um, on hand, um, but if you don't, you can always order them tomorrow during the free shipping promotion. So in case you missed it, Stampin' Up! is offering free shipping on orders of $65 or more for one day only. Now that day is tomorrow. Hi Gail, how are you? Thanks for coming back this week after all the problems last week. Um, so I was just saying the free shipping promotion is tomorrow. Um, you can order online $65 or more. It will ship directly to your door for free, which is awesome. Stampin' Up! doesn't do free shipping promotions very often, which is why I'm so excited about this. So um, if you see something that uh, you like, that you think would be a cute idea to do for Christmas gifts, and you don't have the products you need on hand, by all means, order them tomorrow and you'll get them shipped for free. All right, okay, let's get started. Um, I'm gonna start with this cute little mini pizza box. Now, I posted this yesterday, and I actually made a whole whack of these um, to, hey Sandy, how are ya? Um, I made a whole bunch of these on the weekend as my team Christmas gifts. So inside, um, each one of my Stamping Symphony team members received their own engraved Stamping Symphony acrylic block. So um, these little pizza boxes were perfectly sized to give these little blocks in. And so I thought I would show you how I did these 3D trees. Now you might think it's really obvious, but there's a little trick to doing these because this tree punch is not symmetrical. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So let me grab all my goodies here. Hey, Julie, how are you? All right. So, getting all my stuff out. First of all, let me show you how to put these pizza boxes together. Could these be any more fantastic? I love these gold pizza boxes. Um, first of all, you don't have to do anything really to dress them up. Um, they're just fabulous on their own. Now, all I did was add a little tag on the top, but they are just so, so fantastic. And the best part about them is that they don't require any adhesive to put them together. So I'm gonna start by folding along all the score lines. Just get everything folded in here. Now I am gonna apologize, my voice is not 100% yet. I have been sick for like two weeks. And uh, after teaching all day, my voice is kind of shot. Oh, lucky you with the afternoon off. All right, so you'll see when I take out these little bits here, see these little bits, you gotta pop them out. It leaves kind of like a little tab on each one of these flaps. So to assemble the box, what I'm going to do, I actually like doing this this way. Um, there are some little sort of slots here. See when I fold that up, there's a little slot. So those little tabs are going to go into that those slots. Then you're going to fold this top piece down and tuck these other tabs in. And that's what holds the box shut, just like that. So, so simple. All right. And then, then it's just a matter of closing your lid, tucking in your flaps. Come here, you and you're done, okay? Really, really quick and easy to assemble. All right, so I'm gonna show you how I made my tag, and I'm gonna show you the little secret to making this, um, to, to creating this 3D tree, all right? Now, I also have a bit of a cough, so if I have to stop and cough, I apologize. <coughs> I debated whether or not to do a video this week because I was afraid I'd be coughing all the way through it, but after last week's fiasco, I figured I better not leave you guys hanging. So I have here a um, stitch circle. This is cut from Cherry Cobbler cardstock. Um, this is cut from the, using the stitch shapes dies, okay? And it's the largest circle. So I cut it from the cardstock and then I ran it through the Pinewood Planks embossing folder. So I'm gonna add a little bit 
of Tombow to the back of that. And then I'm gluing it to a shaded spruce scallop circle. This is the largest scallop circle from the layering circles dies. Okay, so that is that. Super simple. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and glue that right onto my... So I'll add a little Tombow on there. My fingers are not working very well. It's freezing in my studio. I put the space heater on when I got down here because it was so cold. I was afraid I wouldn't be able to stamp. <laughs> All right, so we'll put that down. We're going to set this aside, and then I'm going to show you how to do these treats. Okay? So as I mentioned... This punch is not perfectly symmetrical, okay? So if you look from here up, it looks symmetrical, but then when you go down here, do you see how that is not symmetrical? Can you see that, right? Oh, don't tell me I'm having issues again. Please tell me it's working. Are you there, you guys? Can you see this? Please tell me. <laughs> I just, for a minute there, I thought I'd lost you. Is anybody there? Please tell me you're there. Hello? I hope you're there. Oh, I don't want to have this happen again. All right. Um, so as I was saying, if I look here, you'll see that that is not symmetrical. Okay. So the trick with this is you're going to take your paper. All right. So this is the, um, wrapped in plaid DSP. All right. I'm going to punch three trees from the side that I want to show on, on my tree. Okay. So, oh, you lost me for a second. Oh, Sandy, I'm hoping, can you see me now? I'm hoping we're okay. Please tell me this is fixed. My husband assured me it should work. Anywho, let's just keep our fingers crossed and hope that was just a minor little glitch. Um, so I want the green side to be showing the plaid side, okay? So I'm gonna punch three trees from the plaid side of this paper. Okay, so one, two, and three, okay? I'm going to set those aside, but I'm going to keep those three together because I want to keep track of what I'm cutting. Oh, it's cutting in and out. Don't tell me that, Julie. This is not making me happy. All right. I really hope this is working because if it's not, my husband's going back to Rogers. <laughs> okay. So I punched my three trees from the plaid side of my paper. Okay. Now I'm going to flip it over. And from the, the back side, I'm going to punch two more. Now, it's important that you keep these separate from the three that you just punched. So you want to keep track of which ones are which. Okay. So I punched two there. All right. So that is now garbage. And now I'm going to show you how we put this three together. So I have my two that were punched from the back side. And I have three that were punched from the front. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take one of my three that were punched from the front. And I'm going to fold it in half. Actually, I'm going to fold all of these in half. So this is your next job. Now this can be a little bit tricky. Um, I am kind of an expert at this because I did a whole ton of them on the weekend. I always like to start down at the trunk and work my way up to the tip. Okay, you're gonna see when you fold it in half how not symmetrical it is. Okay, do you see that? That's okay, don't worry. As long as your trunk is folded evenly and you, you're folded right in half at the tip, you're good. Okay, so again, I kind of start at the trunk, increase it a little bit to get it going, and then I kind of pinch it in lining up those bottom branches and then work my way up to the tip all right and then again we'll use our bone folder to crisp that up okay are you guys still with me am i back julie or am i still cutting out i really hope this is working two videos in a row not working would not make me happy let me tell you all right so those are my three that were punched from the front now i'm going to do my two that were punched from the back so we'll fold that in half and same thing. We're going to just pinch that right up to the tip. I'm not seeing anybody out there. I see five people watching, so that's good. And I'm still live, so that's good. I'm hoping that we're good. Give me just a heart or a thumbs up or something, you guys, if, if uh, you can hear me okay. All right, just let me know. Okay, so I have my three and my two. Still keeping them separate. Very important. Okay. So I'm going to take one of the three trees, the ones that were punched from the front. Okay. And a little bit of Tombow. And I'm going to put some adhesive, just a little bit of liquid glue. Okay. Sandy, you're good. Julie's having issues. Okay. Well, I'm hoping that we're okay. Okay. So I am putting a little bit of glue on the one tree. I'm going to add, this is one of the ones that were punched from the back side. Okay, so I'm then going to match up and you'll see because I punched, I've, I'm alternating them. I've taken one from that was punched from the front and one that was punched from the back. 
you're going to find that it then matches up. Hey, Jen, how are you doing? I bet it's a lot warmer in Florida than it is here right now. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to add some more glue. And this time I'm going to take one that was punched from the front side. Again, keeping my pile separate so I know which is which. Okay, and I'm going to match up my branches there. And again, you're going to see they match up perfectly because we're, we are, we've, we're alternating punched from the front and punched from the back of the DSP. Okay. All right, so then we're going to take, we have one more that was punched from the back. So I'm going to add a little bit more glue here. And you'll notice I'm not using a ton of glue. All right, you don't want a ton. Um, you will have a very sticky mess if you use too much. You just want enough that's going to bond these two layers together. Okay, so again, I'm matching up my branches. Let's just get this lined up there. Okay, and I just like to pinch the trunk together too to make sure that it's lined up. Okay, and then finally, we have one last one that was punched from the front. So we're going to add it. And again, just line up those branches. Okay, so just take your time when you're putting these together. It's not difficult. You just want to make sure you'll get best results if you take your time to really line up your branches. Okay, but there is my 3D tree. Super simple. Hi, Judy. How's life in Wawa? I bet it's chilly and snowy up there. All right, so I'm going to set this guy aside for a minute to dry, and we are going to punch, or we're going to stamp and punch our little banner. So this is just a one-inch scrap of white cardstock, and I have the Merry Christmas sentiment from the Perfectly Plaid stamp set. I'm going to ink it up in some shaded spruce ink, and then I'm going to stamp it in the middle-ish of my little strip here. Okay. And then we're going to create our banner. Hey, sister, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Hope your uh, babies are doing better. All right, so now I'm going to punch my banner in. So you've seen me do this a million times. And if you haven't bought this tailored tag punch yet, what are you waiting for? Tomorrow during the free shipping promotion is the time to get this punch. If you haven't got it yet, you need it. Trust me. It will change your life. Your banner making life anyway all right so i'm gonna just trim a little smidge off of this scrap here and then i'm gonna add just a little bit of fast fuse or whatever adhesive you like to the end and i'm gonna stick my tree right onto my banner there okay so it's just gonna kind of peek out from behind my tree hello cheryl how are you doing all right so oh my tree's a little crooked oh well that's all right you get the idea Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of Tombow on here, a little bit to the back of my tree, and we're going to pop that onto our label. Yes, my tree is quite crooked. Let's see if we can fix it as we glue it down. I may be able to finagle it a little bit. All right, so now what I like to do is just take a glue dot and tuck it in underneath the trunk of the tree. Okay, so I'm just going to take my take your pick and just tuck it in under here just to hold everything down and together. All right, and that's just gonna secure it. And then I just kind of pinch it in there so it stays put. Okay, so there's my 3D tree. How cute is that, eh? All right, so the last touch is to do, add a few of these little snowflake sequins. Now these are retiring. Well, no, they're hibernating. So these are, Stampin' Up! has identified several items that are going to go away when the holiday catalog ends, but then will come back in next year's holiday catalog. And this happens to be one of them, these adorable little sequins. So if you haven't got them and you need them between now and next year's holiday, you're going to want to pick some up. Um, I find the best way to glue these down is using some of the shimmery crystal effects. Now this is another product that's I think going away, I'm pretty sure it is, um, that I don't think is returning. Now the reason I like using this stuff, A, is that it's really really strong adhesive, and B, because it's got a bit of a shimmer, if I get a little bit too much and it oozes through my sequin, it just looks like it's part of the sequin because it's shiny and sparkly. So I'm just going to add a few little dots of the crystal effects where I want to put my sequins. All right, and then I'm going to take my blue goo end of my take your pick, and it's really easy to pick up these little sequins with that end. So I'm just going to pick them up and pop them down, and we'll grab a couple more. So do you want to hear a story? <laughs> this weekend when I was working on a whole bunch of these for my team, uh, one of our adorable but naughty cats was down here. 
And she was bugging the heck out of me, meow, and meow, and she wanted my attention. And I kept telling her, no, 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 I was busy. Well, she decided that she wasn't going to take no for an answer and jumped right up on my desk with my sequins open, put her paw right in it, and sent them flying. <laughs> so as you can see, I managed to collect most of them. Uh, but my floor is very shiny right now. I haven't run the vacuum, but... <laughs> There will be a very sparkly uh, vacuum dump when I empty my Dyson because there'll be a lot of sequins in there. All right. Anywho, there is your finished box. Isn't that cute? Really, really easy. Um, but again, you could put some little Hershey nuggets in there. You could put um, a gift card in there. There are all kinds of things that you could put a nice bracelet, jewelry, um, all kinds of great things you could package in that little box. And the best part is it can be reused year after year, right? Okay. So that is number one. Love those 3D trees. Just love them. All right, so let me clean up here and we're gonna move on. And I'm gonna show you a fun little gift card holder. Now, if you're like me, gift cards are kind of the go-to, especially for some of the teens and tweens in my life. Um, it's always hard to know what to get to that age group and I find gift cards are a great option. So I'm going to show you how to make this little gift card holder. So I designed this for a Tim Hortons gift card. If you know anything about Canadians, if you are Canadian, you know we love our Tim Hortons. And uh, so I designed this. I got the idea for the window from one of the projects in the catalog. So I played around with it a little bit. And when you open it, there's your little Tim Hortons gift card. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I did that. So let's grab some goodies here. <coughs> Sorry about the coughing and the sniffling. It's tis the season. Ho, ho, ho. All right. So I have here one of our um, craft pillow boxes. Okay. So what I did is I put this in my trimmer and I chopped off the end. So this is, I believe, five and a half inches. Let me just double check that. Is it five and a half? Or is it five? It is five. I lied. It's not five and a half. Good thing I checked. Okay. So this is five inches. So I basically put it in and chopped. Okay. And with our new trimmer, you can chop that in one pass. All right. So then I have this opening here that I need to seal up. So I'm going to use whoops, a little bit of tear and tape. So what I like to do is kind of measure the length that I need. And then open up my box and tuck it right in the end. So I just kind of want it to run along that edge. If you put it too far in, your um, your little insert won't fit quite as well as you might want it to. Okay, so I'll peel off my backing and then just pinch that close. So now I have it closed there, okay? All right, now this is a piece of acetate, some of our window sheet. And I have heat embossed the um, outline of the cup from the Cup of Christmas stamp set. Now, just a word about heat embossing on window sheets. You can probably see that there are some speckles and spatters on here. One of the challenges when you're embossing on window sheets is the static. Okay, especially at this time of year, they're very, very staticky. So even though I liberally used my embossing buddy, uh, when I added the powder on here, it looked like, you know when you did science experiments with um, um, iron filings and magnets in elementary school and you could see like the fur of the, the filings stuck to the magnet? That's what this looked like, but it was static. So it took me a little bit to get rid of the excess and a little bit of paintbrush works to get rid of it. There's still a few, but that's just the look. There is not a lot you can do about that. It is really, really tricky to get rid of all of the powder that you don't want, okay? But it's winter, it's snow, it's a snowy cup. What can I say? All right, so I have heat embossed it, okay? Um, and then I'm going, I, this is cut to the same width as, well, a little bit narrower, where, as my, um, my, what is this pot called? Box, that's what I'm trying to say. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple of glue dots just to the corners of this. And I'm adding them to the front side, okay? To the side that I wanna see in the window. I'm gonna slide this inside. So I'm pinching my box. Just, this is why you need to cut your window sheet just a teensy bit bigger than you need it. And then I'm gonna line it up in that window and then just pinch it, okay? So now it is stuck and there's my window, okay? For my box, all right? You with me so far? I hope so. Okay, so we'll set that aside for a minute and we're gonna work on our insert. So this piece is, I hate that this grid paper doesn't have a ruler on it. I think it's four and a half, four and a quarter. 
It is, all my measurements are off today, four and a quarter by two and a half. And this is a two by five and a half inch piece, okay? So this is gonna create our little pull tab. Now before I do anything, I'm gonna punch the end of my green piece. This is old olive cardstock. I'm gonna take and punch that with my tag punch. So this is gonna get inserted all the way into my punch and I'm gonna punch it, all right? And that gives me that decorative end. This is another must have for quick and easy tags, okay? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this centered on the back of my, um, my real red piece. So I'm gonna add a little bit of fast fuse. And I'm just gonna glue that. So I'm gonna have my edges flush and just glue it right onto the back of that piece. Okay, so that's gonna be the foundation of my pull tab. Did I fussy cut? Oh, no, I did not, Sandy. That's actually a very good question. I actually used the die to cut this cup. That's a good point. Let me show you what I did. That's why this is in here. <laughs> so before I did anything, before I even cut my little end off my box, I slid, this is just a piece of the backing paper from DSP. Okay, and what I did is I slid it into the box before I ran it through the Big Shot. And that kept it from cutting all the way through the box. Okay, you can see the outline of it, but it didn't go all the way through. Okay, and that's how I cut my window. So this kind of just created a little buffer there to protect the other side of my, my box so I didn't cut right through. Thanks for asking, I meant to mention that, I almost forgot. All right, so there is my little insert. Now, this little piece that I cut off of the box, we're gonna use, we're not gonna throw it out. It's going to create the piece that is going to hold our gift card. Now, if you notice, when I slide this on here, you see how it's a little bit wider? So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this right at the little notch there. And then I'm gonna add adhesive just along, actually I'm gonna use some tear and tape just along that bottom edge, all the way along, okay? And I'm gonna take off my backing, if my fingers will work. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick this down on here. Now I'm gonna center this bump on this piece. So I kinda wanna line it up, get it centered as best I can. Okay, and then I'm just gonna fold this in so that it actually wraps snugly around that insert piece. Okay, and then same thing on this side. So it's gonna overlap a little bit on the back, not a big deal. But that is going to create our little piece, and I'll just pull this out so you can see the finished one. That's going to hold our gift card in place. Okay, that's our little sort of gift card Gift card snug, for lack of a better word, okay? So that's gonna sit in there like that. All right, last thing to do on this insert piece is to add our ribbon. So this is just a scrap, it's about four and a half inches of uh, the Real Red 3 8 cotton ribbon. This is from the annual catalog. All right, and um, it is great ribbon. It's easy to use, it's um, got a nice texture to it, really easy to tie. So I'm just gonna thread one end through the hole in my tag, and then I've got just a little bit of white twine here. So this is a little trick for how to use ribbon that maybe is a little bit too bulky for um, to tie a knot or to tie a bow, um, but it's a great way to create sort of a, a gathered look without actually having to tie a bow. So I'm just gonna tie a single knot, and this is where I need a third hand. I'm gonna hold that down and tie a double knot so that it's nice and snug, okay? And then I'll just trim off the excess. So I didn't tie a bow at all. No bow on this one, you guys. You'll get your bow tying lesson on the next one, don't you worry. Okay, so now that will get inserted into our, come here you, there we go. That gets inserted into our little pocket there. Okay, just like that. All right, now we are going to decorate the front of this a little bit. So I have, first of all, we're gonna create a little tag. Um, this is cut again with those stitch shapes dies. Where is my, there it is, my stamp. Um, and this I think is the second small, smallest circle. All right, now I have a stamp from the cup, uh, cup of Christmas stamp set and I'm actually gonna ink it using my stamp and write markers. That's so that I can get my two-tone stamping. So I want my words to be red. Now, when you are using photopolymer stamps with your stamp right markers, you, you might need to go over 
um, the image a couple of times with your marker to get a nice crisp image. Um, they don't accept the ink quite as easily as the um, rubber, red rubber stamps. So I'm just using the brush tip of my Stampin' Right marker, um, inking this up. The best way to do this is with sort of the side of your brush tip, and that way you get more coverage and it goes a little bit quicker, but you can see how that ink is starting to beat up on that photopolymer. So you gotta work quickly. And the last thing that you wanna do before you stamp this is you're gonna huff on it to make sure you get nice moist ink. So then I'm gonna take my old olive and I'm gonna ink up my little greenery here. I'm not gonna worry about those berries because we're gonna cover them with some gems in a minute. So we're just gonna stamp that right on there. And you're gonna see this isn't quite as crisp and clear an image. In fact, what I would probably do is use my Stamparatus and go over that again to crisp that up. I'm not gonna take the time to do that right now, um, but you get the idea, okay? So this is then going to get adhered to a two inch red circle. This is real red. I just punched it using my two inch circle punch. So we'll add a little bit of glue to this. Hi, Deb, how are ya? I'm glad to be seen creating too. It seems my Wi-Fi issues have been solved. I was a little nervous there at first because it was cutting in and out, but I think we're good. Um, so I have some of these little sprigs. These were cut using the Cup of Cheer dies, okay? And I'm not gonna take the time to poke out all those little bits, but you can. I actually kinda like the look of them in there, so I'm gonna leave them. So I'm gonna add one little set of sprigs here. I've got a couple of holly leaves. I'm gonna add them to the other side. So we'll add one here and one here, and then we're gonna add another set of sprigs in behind them, okay, just to kind of layer them. And then that is going to get popped onto the front of my little gift card holder using some dimensionals. So we'll just get rid of these backings and pop it on just like that okay and then we're gonna add a couple more sprigs just up here we're gonna add some ribbon and tie it off but we're gonna stick some sprigs on there first I'll get rid of that big one there glue dots we're gonna add just a glue dot there okay and then we're gonna take and add some ribbon so the ribbon I'm just gonna wrap it around and tie. This is one of the weird, rare times that I actually wrap ribbon all the way around. And that's just because we're gonna see the back of it, right? So we want it to look pretty. So I'm gonna wrap it around and I want my knot to kind of end up where my little sprig is. So I'm just gonna get that lined up where I want it. And I'm gonna tie a nice double knot here. So again, the, ba the, the thing when you're trying to tie a square knot is to keep your ribbon from twisting keep it flat of course that's not going to work for me right now no it's not that's okay we're not going to get a square knot all right and then i'm going to trim my tails so that they are at a bit of an angle that keeps the ribbon from fraying and yeah, it looks pretty and then i've got a couple of little red um, holly dots these again were cut using the cup of cheer dies and we're going to add them to our little sprigs here so i'm just going to add a couple of little dots of tombow Come on, one, and two, and three. And I'm gonna take my take your pick again. And we're just gonna add them right, and just kind of plop them right on there. And they will adhere to our little sprigs. Okay, so there is my almost finished gift card holder. The last thing is a little bit of bling because, well, everything needs some bling at Christmas. So I'm going to go ahead and add some red rhinestones to the berries on my circle here. So I'm just going to go one and two and three. And then I'm going to add some on the other side too. Sorry, my voice is going quite croaky. Should have heard me in school today. <laughs> I was croaking away trying to get my kids to be quiet so I don't have to yell over top of them. Good luck when they've got instruments in their hands. All right, 
there we go okay there is our finished gift card holder how cute is that so if you have some of these little pillow boxes if you don't they're awesome they're like 6.75 for a package of eight they're super uh, reasonably priced and um, there are so many different things you can do with these guys I mean on their own they're really quick and easy gift packaging um, but a really really easy way to make um, a cute gift card holder Okay, you could totally use this for Starbucks too, for those of us that aren't Tim Hortons lovers, but <laughs> I was thinking Tim Hortons all the way with this one. Okay, all right, so that is number two. We're going to set that aside, and I'm going to bring in number three. Now, this is super quick and easy. So, I know at this time of year, some of us are have a little bit of a hoarding problem when it comes to DSP. Can anybody relate? Anybody out there have a hoarding problem? I know it can be very, very hard to, to cut up our pretty paper, but look at it this way. If you cut up your pretty paper, hi, Karen. Hi, Debbie. Um, if you cut up your pretty paper now, you can buy more pretty paper later and not feel guilty, right? And there is some very, very pretty paper coming in the new catalog. So I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to create these cute little, they look like Christmas crackers. They're actually not, they don't crack, uh, but they are really cute little gift card holders. Inside of this one, I have um, some lint chocolate truffles. So this would be a really, really fun and cute um, teacher gift, right? Put some of those in, make a coordinating card and done. This teacher would really like to get this, I'm just saying. <laughs> Okay, so let me show you how I'm how to do that. All right, so I have here. This is some of that adorable. Um, what is it called? Let it snow. I think DSP. It is sadly sold out, um, but I have several sheets of this left because I use some of it in one of my events, but I didn't use all of it. So I have quite a bit of it. So I thought I would use some up today. So I have cut a piece of, of DSP. It's nine by eight and three quarters inches. Okay, nine by eight and three quarters. Now you can change the this length if you want. Don't change this dimension. Okay, if you change this dimension, it will simply make a shorter um, package. But this one needs to be consistent so that your measurements for your score lines work. Okay. All right. So I'm going to bring in my trimmer. This is our brand new trimmer. How many of you have got your hands on this yet? It's pretty darn awesome. Got too much stuff on my desk to be able to make my trimmer fit. All right, so I'm gonna turn this so that my eight and three quarter inch um, measurement is at the top. All right, I'm just gonna put that in to make sure. Yes, I'm at eight and three quarters here, okay? All right, so I'm gonna score, and I will put these, these measurements up after, okay? So I'm gonna score um, at one and three quarters and at three and a half, and at five and a quarter, and at seven. Okay, that's it, four score lines, super simple. Get this guy out of the way. Sorry about the sniffling. <laughs> And then I'm gonna take my small ornament punch. So this is from the uh, Brightly Gleaming Suite. Okay, these punches are still available. There is a large and a small punch. And um, to make this cracker, you're gonna need this punch, okay? So what I'm going to do, and I'm gonna turn it this way so you can see the score lines a little bit better. I'm going to center the score line. So I'm pushing my um, paper in as far as it will go into the punch, and I'm centering the score line. So can you see the score line there? Does that show up? Okay, I'm centering it in my ornament and I'm gonna punch, and I'm gonna go all the way across and do that on each score line. Okay, and another one. Okay, then I am also going to do both edges. So I'm going to insert one edge, and again, I'm lining that edge up with the in the center of the ornament and punching, and then doing the same thing on the other side. All right, I've got ornaments flying all over the place here. Okay, then I'm gonna flip it around. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So again, in as far as it'll go, center, in as far as it'll go, center, all the way across, okay? Once you get going on these, you can whip up a bath of these in a hurry. It's a great way to use up DSP so that nobody says you're a hoarder. <laughs> and you can buy more next year. All right, or maybe use up patterns that you don't especially love to use on projects, and this this make great little um, DS or great little gift card or gift holders. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, so there is my punch DSP. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and fold along all of my score lines. Okay, and you're going to want to use a bone folder here. Um, this is a little bit trickier to fold because of the, the glitter, the sparkle on this paper. Um, just regular plain DSP will be, be a little bit easier to fold, but this is totally doable. Just want to make sure you crisp it up with your bone folder. Okay, so that's how this is going to come together. So we're going to go ahead and apply some tear and tape along one of these panels. So I'm going to start by putting one long piece, the full length. So I'm kind of going in between the punch outs there. Okay, and make sure that's stuck down. And then I'm going to put another piece right along the edge. And another one right along this edge, right up to the score line. And then I'm going to add some little pieces on the ends. Okay, so it's important to make sure this is well adhered, just so um, it kind of creates a little bit more stability for your box. Um, it's not a super sturdy box because it is made of DSP. Um, you could certainly make this out of 12 by 12 cardstock and it would totally work and then you'd have a really nice sturdy box if you had something um, a little bit more solid that you wanted to put in there. Okay, so I've got my tear and tape on there. I'm going to go ahead and peel my backings off if it decides to work. There we go. Come on, fingernails, don't fail me now. And we'll get this guy, and this guy, who's watching? Hey Laura, how are ya? And then we'll get these little guys down here, and finally this guy. Come here. Ah, uh, don't you hate it, even when you got your last piece? There we go, okay. So now this is so easy to glue. All I'm going to do is go ahead and fold this flap right over the one that has the adhesive on. And that way I know I'm going to get it nice and square. Everything's going to line up. And there we go. Super easy, right? And then to close this off, I'm going to use some of my curly ribbon. Now I'm going to, you want to put your treat in there first, right? So I'm not going to tie off the other end, but I'm essentially, now with this curly ribbon, let me show you a tip. This stuff really frays on the ends. So what I like to do is I actually take and tie off the end, and I think it looks kind of cute actually. Okay, and then it kind of creates a fuzzy end, but it's not going to keep fraying. All right, so you're going to take, I don't know, probably about 10 inches, tie off your other end, make sure that it doesn't fray on you. Okay, I love this ribbon, it reminds me of like a woolly scarf. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and tie this. Now you can pull this fairly tightly. You don't wanna pull it super, super tight. You're gonna see it's gonna buckle, but don't worry, we can um, pop it back out. And then I'm gonna tie my bow. Okay, and that's gonna kinda hold it. Then I can insert whatever my treats are and then tie off the other end, okay? Now, do you see how this is buckled in? To pop it back out, just put your finger in there and, and pop it back out, okay? Now I've left that a little bit loose. I probably would retie that a little bit tighter, but you get the idea, okay? Actually, maybe I will tie off that end just so that it is closed when we do our tag. So again, we're gonna, oh, we're gonna tie off our ends of our curly ribbon here. I don't really think of this as ribbon. It's more like yarn. It's like curly yarn. How great would it be to have a scarf knitted out of this? When this stuff goes in the clearance rack, I'm going to buy a bunch. And then somebody who knows how to knit needs to make me a scarf, okay? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to tie this off as well. Make my bow. Okay, pretend I've already put my treats in there. And pop those out. Okay, so far so good. There's my little treat. You can turn your bows around so that they're both on the same side. All right, I'll probably make that one smaller so it matches, but you get the idea. All right, so then we are going to create our little tag. Now, this, these little embellishments, actually this is one of my favorite sweets this year. These little felt embellishments are the cutest things ever. I absolutely adore them. Um, unfortunately, these are also sold out. I wish I had bought like five packages of this because it's so darn cute. Hi, Anne. Hi, Jen. Um, I absolutely love these guys. But anyway, they are sold out, so we won't cry too hard. There's good stuff coming in the new catalog. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. This is um, another pattern from this paper. Okay. I've just punched a or die cut rather a two and a quarter inch circle and I'm going to go ahead and just apply a little bit of adhesive to the back of that and stick it onto the front of my little box here okay and when you're pressing it on just put your finger inside so that you don't squish your box all right okay so now we're going to stamp us a snowman so I have here my snowman this is the snowman stamp from the what's it called 
uh, snowman season stamp set. We're going to pop him or stamp him on there. And then we are going to use our snowman punch, which I forgot to leave out. So it's right here. Uh, we're going to pop that right out. Okay. So we're going to line him up there and just pop him right out. Okay. And we've got extra pieces flying. That's all right. Okay. So then I'm going to color his nose. The best thing about coloring a snowman is there's not much to color. We're just going to color his nose orange. Give him a little carrot nose. And that's it. Super simple. Quickest coloring ever. All right, so now I want him to have some arms. So I have punched some arms. There's some white arms. I punched some black arms ahead of time using that same punch. So I'm gonna add a glue dot to the back of them and kind of give them some arms here. And another one here. Okay, and then we're gonna keep them warm. So you will notice if you have these little guys that there is a right and a wrong side. You see how that's kind of messy? That's the wrong side. But the more important thing is that this side is a little bit smoother and it's easier to apply your adhesive rather than this side, which is a little bit fuzzier. So when you apply your adhesive, you're going to really want to press and then kind of peel that dot off as you pull up the felt. Okay, otherwise you'll just leave your glue dip there. Okay, it won't stick to the felt. So we're going to kind of snug that up under his chin there. And then we've got a little toque. And what I did for his toque is I actually went and added a glue dot right at the top edge of his head. Okay, kind of right there. So he almost looks like Mickey Mouse ears on there. <laughs> but that is so that when I go to stick the toque on, I'm not covering up his eyes. Okay, he needs to be able to see. All right, so there is my adorable little snowman. So I'm gonna go ahead, actually no I'm not, cause I gotta do my, my little banner first. So here I have a one inch strip of white cardstock. This is just a random strip. And I'm gonna take some real red ink and I'm gonna stamp Merry Christmas on that little strip there. Just like that, okay. And then I'm gonna take my magical tailored tag punch if I can figure out where I put it. <laughs> I cleaned up too well, there it is. And I'm gonna punch one end to create my little banner and I'm punching the end that has the M from Mary okay because my snowman's gonna go here and then I'm also this is a one and a quarter inch strip of real red cardstock so I'm gonna punch one end of that as well set that aside and then this is just gonna get glued down onto that strip and I can slide it so that I have an equal border on all the sides I'm not worrying about this side because that's gonna get trimmed off so we're gonna add a little bit of glue here I was making Christmas cards with my dev egg class at school today. It was fun. Uh -uh. We use paper pumpkin stuff. Paper pumpkin to the rescue. All right. So we're going to pop that on there just like that. Okay. And then I'm just going to trim off the end of this, leaving just enough to glue my snowman to. Oh, my scissor charm's in my way. Can't close the scissors. And then I'm going to add a little bit of fast fuse there. Add my little snowman. There he is with his little happy ba happy little banner. And then I'm going to add some dimensionals and pop him up on the front of my little treat box there. So we'll just add a couple right along the length of this strip. And maybe one kind of here under his head so he doesn't get squished flat. Get rid of our backings. And then we're going to pop that right onto our little box here. And that's going to fit just nicely. And there you go. How cute is that? You can make little um, treats to put at Christmas dinner. They, they would be really adorable little place settings. Um, this, I, as I said, it holds the little box of three Lindor truffles really nicely. Um, you could fill it up with just about anything. You could put a pair of socks in there as a stocking stuffer if you wanted to. So um, really cute. And again, you can adjust the length of these by adjusting that nine inch measurement. Okay, the eight and three quarter one. Needs to, no, I lied. The nine inch one needs to stay the same. The eight and three quarter one can change. Okay. Um, and that will adjust your length. So if you want to make shorter ones or longer ones, you can play around with that. Okay. All right. So let me pull in all three projects again so you can see them all together. Here we go. Get rid of all my garbage. All right. So there are three simple and easy to put together um, treat holders, gift card holders that you can use during this festive season.
Okay. Hi, Deb. I'm just signing off. So I hope you go back and watch the beginning of this video. So just a reminder, everybody, tomorrow is free shipping day, 24 hours uh, only. Um, so if you still have items on your wish list that you need to get before they go away at the end of this month, uh, tomorrow is the perfect time to order them. All right. I will have a host code. It's actually posted already on my uh, business page, but I will repost that tomorrow. Um, and if you use that host code, you'll get a special thank you from me in the mail. All right. Thanks, everybody. I hope you have an awesome week and I will see you again next week for another episode of Tuesday Live at 5. Bye for now.